Well, mailbag time. Big box. This is potentially a future project. We'll see how we go. Do you want to buy this stuff? Maybe. I don't know. Stick around find out. There'll be links down below for most of these items. Hopefully. Depends what they are. That is smaller than I thought it was going to be. But okay. It's a USB-C type meter. So I've been getting some USB-C stuff recently. And as I didn't have any kind of testers or anything, I thought I'd better get something. Because I've got no way of knowing what the current draw is or how they're actually performing, that kind of thing. I've got no idea. There's two layers of wrap on here. <laughs> you, get, you get it twice. Oh, but, so you're ready for again. Might spoil it the first time. Yeah, it's not quite as good as the screws hang on to them, is it? Yeah, so basically because I didn't have any USB-C stuff, I thought I'd better start getting some and that's just, you never quite know what you need. If you want to monitor a USB-C device, it was sort of, whether it's using power delivery or whether it's actually negotiating correctly and that sort of stuff. There's a QR code in the back there. That's what it will look like. Destruction on Mediafire, really. Hmm. This came about because I've got two USB devices. I've got the Miniware uh, mini hot plate MHP30, which I've used, I've purchased that not long ago. A little bit handy little hot plate thing for doing you know small surface mount work. And also I've got the Unity UTI 260B thermal camera. So I've got that, and that's also USB-C for charging. So I thought I'll get myself a little monitor thing. It could be interesting. I've got some like plain USB 2 ones stuff like that, but this is the first USB-C stuff I've got. Which I think it'd be a bit remiss of me to actually do this without plugging the thing in and trying it out. So let's actually have a look. Just plug that in there, get it powered up. Let's power that every there we go. It's doing 5 volts right now. And what's this one do? It also turns it off. So power off and on. Power delivery or power bar? I'm kind of confused by that. So that's off. That's also off. That's power on. And if I do that, it turns off again. Uh, what? <laughs> then you've got K1 and K2, which are buttons. Hmm. Right. These are the first things that supports. Just plug cable in here. After this, the other way around. I think you can work the other way around. To plug this into here instead. Yep, yeah, still works that way. Works both directions. Right. And I'll plug this into my thermal camera. Which may or may not be charging, I don't know. Yeah, 1.7 amps. Awesome. But saying that 4.5 volts. Hmm. It's going to work quite hard, isn't it? And it says quick charge too. So, I guess it's recognised something. I mean, are there, are there different modes I can use here? Let's have a look. If I push this button, what does it happen? Particle detection. Right. Both doing the same thing. Various display options by pushing that. That's what a clean display, that one. Tells you everything you need to know. Okay, this one here. Leave it on that display. But yeah, well, it seems to be working anyway. And you can use it either way around. Okay, I figure it switches. So, the both are power switches. Now, this one does the display. This turns the display on and off. You can see it's still providing power. This one turns off the power. So which is why if you have that one over, you've got nothing still because there's no power. You flick this one over, power comes back on, and it's outputting. So that's how switches figured out. Excellent. And I've reconfigured this now, so I'm out using different ports on here. I've got another cable, which is a USB-C to C, and now I'm charging through that instead. And you see it's actually working a little bit better, which is interesting. Anyway, I've got this out, I'm going to try this. Right, let's plug the MHP30 in, and it's not doing a lot of power, is it? Look at that. 35 milliamps. That's just obviously just running the display. Low voltage, really. Well, ain't working now. 
Well, that's interesting. So I can't get this to work with them anywhere. It just keeps saying no low voltage or something. Even now, just without that, it's still complaining about it. That's interesting. And I repowered my power bank, and now it, it's actually working. And that's weird. Well, let's try this again. There you go, 20 volts. Here we go. Now it looks like it's working. Push a button on the back, does it work? Yes, there we go, it's heating now. There we go, 20 volts, 2.6 amps. That's more like what I was expecting. See, my power bank might have got a bit mixed up. Oh well, that's good then, it works. So, one of the handy things about this particular tester is that right now you can see it's showing 5.1 volts, so the output from this power bank is absolutely fine. But, when I plug this tester into the other end of the cable, I get a different result which means you can actually check if your voltage drop across the cable to see how well your cable is actually handling the current. That's an important thing because not all cables are created equal. Swap the ends around, plug this in the bank, plug this into here instead, that has power, there we go, we're getting 4.6 volts. In fact if I unplug it from here, see there's 5 volts there, with almost no load on it, plug it in this end. So we're getting basically 500 millivolts of drop through this cable. So this goes to show just because you've got a decent voltage at one end doesn't mean your device is seeing a decent voltage. Obviously in this case it's of course it's drawing 1.8 amps you know it's going to cause some kind of drop through these little cables. I mean the wires aren't very big right so they have a resistance which is going to cause this. 1.8 amps, 500 millivolts. He wants to work out the power rating of that cable. How much power has been dissipated in that when the wire? Go on, blick it out, go on. For comparison, the mini wear, when this is heating, oh, this is turned off. Warning. Oh, because I've tipped it over. <laughs> it doesn't like me tipping it over. Good on it. So I'll heat this up again. Let's try and get some shots so you can see. So we're getting 19.4 volts, 2.6 amps. Tip it over so that stops. So we're getting 0.8 volts drop. So 0.8 volts, 2.6 amps. How much power has been dissipated when it's using this? Go on, work that one out. Next thing. Right, it's a phone holder. Another one, which is very similar to one I already purchased my wife actually. So she had an issue with her phone holder breaking and I bought another one. And then I kind of bought another one. That's good, isn't it? Hmm, I'm not sure a suction cup's going to work too well like that. Hmm, <laughs> it's like semi-adhesive as well, this like, sticky, which is good because it helps them stay on a bit longer. And then we've got this extension part like this, so it's quite a long one. And sometimes you need a long bracket for your phone. And that depends on your car situation, what it's that you're using. This is slightly different to the other one. It's not exactly the same, it's, it's definitely different. Similar principle at least. It's got a different mechanism up here. There's a button there, which I'm guessing allows it to slide out, yep, so that's a locking button, stops it sliding down, so you can adjust the height of this, and the width is another button up here, which allows it to come out, so you can just preset the width and it will just slide in there and hold it, so these are actually pulled in very slightly from the sides, you see that, so they actually cup it quite nicely and actually hold it in place, so you can just slide it down, depends on your case I suppose, like my case and my phone's quite thick, I like to have it well protected, it's probably better than some of the other cases, like the other one which my wife had, which is actually a sprung one, you have to open it up to put the phone in, which is a bit more messing around. For me, I like the one which I can just slide it in, and it will just hold it in place, so I think I prefer this one myself. I don't think it's still got a big box yet. That's going to be interesting. If you wait for those to come up for a while, for the right price, it's only finally come up. Uh, okay, this I purchased potentially for my wife, I'm not entirely sure. She's currently doing dresses and stuff right now, so she's doing um, steampunk for example, she's really into that right now, and she's doing some events for that, and some gatherings, and, and she's also doing another dress which is very, I forgot what she's called now, some naturist kind of thing, not naturist, it's not right, <laughs> she, she does have clothes on. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I can't remember what it's called now. I've forgotten, it's got a special name, but it's like being with nature kind of thing, it's like plants and stuff like that. It does have a name, I forgot what it is. Anyway, she was looking at these 
electroluminescent wires for having on the costume, right? So she can plug it into a battery pack or something and have you know be lit up and have patterns and stuff. Actually, that's not a bad idea. I might get a couple and have a play with them. But these are USB powered. The battery pack. I suppose you could get a battery pack and just plug it in. This actually power one is up. I don't know what voltage these things put out, but um, I think they're fairly high voltage because electroluminescent cables and wires use high voltages. Interesting way that my camera is really showing this up as being a different colour. Maybe it's the monitor. I'm not sure, but this is a very different green to this. This is a much lighter green, but on camera they look almost the same. It's interesting. So let's plug this in. It might whine a bit. I don't know because they are basically using AC voltages. I've played with electroluminescent displays before, like um, many years ago I had a Sony car stereo. It's a really expensive car stereo because I was really into McCauley at the time. It was like $2,000 a stereo. Had fiber optic outputs and stuff like that. Really high end, low noise levels, beautiful thing. That had an electroluminescent display and the backlight failed after probably about three years or things. Like it's a really expensive stereo, I'm not going to throw it out because I can't see a display. So I pulled the thing apart and I actually purchased some electroluminescent kits so you can actually get like the films and you can rebuild a backlight for a, a display. They weren't cheap to get, I think it's like 100 bucks or so for the kit, but I've still got stuff left, I've still got it. You know, I only use a small piece because it's just for a display of that particular stereo. So that's how I learned a little bit about electroluminescent displays, about testing that thing for finding that, to try and find out how that thing works. And that's when I found out it's running over 100 volts. It's like 130 volts or something. <laughs> it's amazing. Plug this in. And I did see that just come on, and it is glowing a little bit. It's a really thin little line in there. Now my lighting is flooding this out completely. So it's drawing right now, it's 100 milliamps, so that's good. Now you can start seeing it's glowing. So it's not a particularly strong glow. I mean, it is glowing, but it's not a strong glow. Um, at night, that would definitely stand out. I mean, during the day, probably not. You wouldn't really see it during the day, but at night, in you know, dim lighting, that would definitely stand out. That's good. So yeah, just right in the center. Just literally a wire. That's all it is. Slightest little thing, it's just a fluorescent, basically, it's just like a fluorescent. Um, yeah, anyway, yes, it is working, could be good for something. It was cheap. I mean, it isn't particularly powerful, you know, it's it's very, very subtle. Like I said, at night time it would probably be alright, but, you know, I was thinking maybe I could use it for some lighting around my desk or something, you know, or to accentuate this and just have some kind of lighting in the background to make it a bit more interesting to look at. But as you can barely even see this thing, um, not suitable for what I want. I guess it's my wife's. She can do with them what if she wants. Of course, she's still got to figure out how to power them, but I suppose that become my problem in. Oh, it's another USB tester. So obviously, I decided I need to get some USB testers at the time. <laughs> so I purchased more than one. This is from Canary Instructions. It's in Chinese and English. There we go. Count up to 5.1 amps. Mm, you'd be pushing it. 4 to 30 volts up to 155 watts. Mm. I suppose I should power this one up now, too. I'm not doing the same testing I did before. Okay, power bank again. Let's plug it in. See what happens. Let's plug it in. See what happens. That's really tight. Let's try it on. There you go. It's just a really good fit. So you have to push the button turn it on, do we? Hmm. That's doing nothing. Let's turn it around. Shouldn't matter, but you know, you never know. It's not pairing up. So I plug the cable in to feed it from the other direction instead. Still nothing. Okay. Just didn't feel very heavy. So we obviously have something in there. Yeah, okay, it's not fake, it just doesn't work. And that's what's in it. And for whatever reason, it doesn't pair up. Can't see any faults. Could it just be a bad display? Why doesn't that work? I think I might need to plug this into the other one to see what happens. There's the other tester, which we worked before. Let's try this one without a casing on it. And now we have a display. What the hell? Or just take out the case, apart from plug it into this. And that's weird. Hmm, is it because the device has got to negotiate a USB-C connection? Possibly. Let's have a look. Let's take that back out. Plug this one back in again. Space falling off. It's dead again. Let's put this back in the casing. It's obviously working, kind of. 
anyway. It's obviously much more fussy than the other one though. With that plug straight in there, it wasn't working. Let's plug this into the end of it, will that wake it up? It does. So you have to have some kind of device plugged into it in order for it to wake up. I'm not sure I like that design. Alright, let's plug through the menus. Menus. And there's nothing really there. Oh, upside down. Okay, double click where I take it. Alright, well, it works. Just couldn't see voltage though. Which one's wrong? Hmm. This one seems better quality than this one. But this has got a proper case. So, yeah, I don't know. It's taken ages to record this video. These are for adapters. I'm waiting for these for a little while. I don't want to anything I bought them for, I've actually finished. <laughs> so, hmm. That's an SM8 end, one end. The other end is an SMC. I was working on a rack old Dana 2101 microwave fix counter and I was trying to diagnose what was wrong with it and I needed to try and probe some of the modules inside it and I didn't actually have the correct cables or adapters I needed. That was actually a new type of connector which I wasn't familiar with, I'd never come across them before. Next time I'll come across something like that, I will hopefully have the right adapter. And now we have the big box. Packaging looks promising. This could be definitely improved. Power cable, I could have kept that in the mind. IEC to US, I'm guessing. Okay, not done too bad a job. It could have been slightly better, but it's not bad. There's a reasonable amount of protection, I suppose. I mean, there's the device there, and it's got all this around it, so it's not too bad. I mean, you've got stuff sticking out the front, though. So there's not much of a layer between that and the cable router. That's not the best. I would have preferred a bit more on the front panel there. The sides are a bit protected in the front is, but I suppose it's limited by the box size, but yeah, okay, it's not too bad. They actually tried. They have actually tried. So I'll give them that one. It's better than some of the gear you see, like uh, all the gear no idea recently. Chris, he had a really old radio, you know, irreplaceable things. You can't just go and buy another one. This is not out there. This wasn't in great condition when he bought it, but when it arrived, it was all smashed up because they didn't put any padding at all in the box. It's just shoved in a box. And naturally, the boxes get thrown around and, and dropped and tossed in between things and thrown onto conveyors. People don't have no idea how things get treated in postal systems. Until you receive something which has been smashed up in the post, and you go, oh, maybe they're not so careful with it after all. They don't care to pick up a package like this and gently place it down to make sure it doesn't get knocked. No, don't do that. They drop it. Or they throw it. That's how they treat stuff, because they've got thousands and thousands of these things to get through. They don't have the time to mess around treating your thing really carefully. And as some postal agencies are worse than others, mine is actually pretty good. I don't have many issues with things arriving damaged. It's very rare, so I'm quite lucky. But I know that in the UK there's a certain company, I believe it begins with an H, which isn't very good. I have a reputation for delivering things which are then being smashed in the postal system. Whether it's their fault, whether it's before they get it, I can't speculate, but anyway. So, yes, puzzle, yeah, packaging, I'm, I'm on a rant. So let's get this out, I'm going to turn it around the other way so you don't see what it is straight away. Leave some suspense. Yeah, I mean, I've done alright, it's padding in the bottom as well. I mean, it's not too bad. They've tried. Okay, so we've got this tilting bale, fuse holder, set currently to 120 volts. We've got to fix that right now. Before we do anything, I'm going to change that. Let's get my... Heavy duty tweezers. I did tweezers for years, like 25 years I've had these tweezers. And they're still really good. It's like super high quality. But you can't buy them now. It should be able to pull the card, there we go. Alright. So spin it around that way. 240 volt, that's what I want. We'll shove that back in again. Like that. And I do need to pop the fuse out. Need to check what's in it. Oh, decent size fuse. Uh, it's 250 volt. So 120 volt should be 100 milliamps or 60 milliamps. That's really low. 60 milliamps for 240 volt. I've read the name, I can read the brand name. Can't read the rating. I can see the word amp. One tenth. Here you go, one tenth. It's, it's the division ratio. It's one slash ten, so one tenth of an amp. So 100 milliamps fuse, what's in it? I was going to put that back in again. I've got nothing that's more. So, that can stay in place. That's what it is. 
There you go, it's a Boonton Model 25A power meter calibrator. So this outputs certain RF levels. I think it runs at 1 megahertz, if rightly. Yeah, there you go, 1 megahertz. And it's 50 amp output. And this outputs these fixed levels. And it means you can do this calibration check on your equipment to make sure that it's reading the correct levels. Be wanting to get something like this for a while. Don't know if this works, got no idea. It was, I don't know, I think it's about $250, I think it was something like that, $300. Not particularly cheap, but they sometimes go for a lot more than that. So I grabbed it whilst I could. Now, I don't really need to use this sort of thing very often, but it's nice to have a reference to do basic checks. It certainly only does low output power, so it does like 100 milliwatts maximum or 20 dBm. It's not super high power, and you just basically hook up to your in connector up here, output that to your piece of test gear, and you try and get the 1 megahertz signal to, to show up. Should we open up first? Tempted. So, calibration sticker on the top, calibrated 2005, June 2006. So, that's 16 years ago since it was last calibrated but in reality calibration there's, there's lots of discussion about calibration right so there's misconceptions about what calibration actually is it depends the calibration can be purely a functionality check to make sure a piece of equipment is working within its specification a calibration can also be an adjustment even though it says calibrated it, all that really means is it's been verified as working at that time with these ranges possibly it may have been out of spec, it's still been checked. Don't know. So that's, that's the risk of calibration anyway. So I, I tend to use the word calibration for adjustment. And you know that's kind of what I mean. I'm saying calibration, I'm adjusting something. But generally, calibration is also a check, a verification of its accuracy. So yeah, anyway, nothing waffling. Let's do something with this. So though it's got this calibration sticker, there's no seals on the top or bottom cases. They've both been re removed. I can see glue residue. So it was once upon a time sealed and no longer is. So that could be a clue. Let's take this top cover off. Looks like it might need to be one screw. Really short screw at that. Is that it? Is there more to this? All right, here we go. <laughs> Amazing. And <laughs> this is what's in it. Not a lot. So you've got a transformer in the back here, input protection stuff that comes through to here, and goes straight in. It's like, wow, that's just like almost nothing in it. <laughs> also, you've got the calibration adjustment stuff down here, which is obviously adjustable from the bottom there. Um, it's a little bridge rectifier, so there's a little power supply there. So this comes through, runs down the back, through here to that ball with a Voltage regulator is, and that is a 7.05 voltage regulator down there. there you go, so that's the power regulator side there. And then obviously you've got this box on the side here, which is doing the actual outputs. So it's all got penetrators for the side there, RF penetrators. Nice. Okay, so these uh, tilting barrels, they push in. Some, some pull out, some push in, these ones push in. I'll get that out of the way. So the interesting is you've got this. So let's just switch over here. So it's actually got a switching mechanism on the back, but inside here is some kind of RFE goodness because you've got a hard line coming through from this box into here. And then it goes through there to the output connector in the front there. That's interesting. I think I found a manual for this. I'm just trying to remember now if I found one or not. Anyway, we'll pair it up and have a quick look. Right, I've uh, adjusted to try and get the hopping meter in the background. You can probably just see it. It's slightly fuzzy because I'm trying to get the focus across the high frame and it doesn't really work. Anyway, so plugged in, we're going to turn the power on for the first time. It's set about 230 volts generally, it's what I tend to sit it at. And we've already changed the jump around, so it should be ready for that voltage. Switch on the front is off. We'll turn it on, we should have nothing on here. We don't. That's a good sign. So you should be able to flick the switch on. And we still have nothing on there. <laughs> right. Do we have an indicator? We do not. There's no indicator either. So let's do a bit of probing down the bottom there. Yeah, 
looks like it's a general transformer they use for different functions. It looks like it's factory sealed, not using those windings. These are there, they're okay. Well, what I could do is check for voltages over here. So we've got these lines here, they come down to the switch. The indicator comes from the board. So if the board is running, the indicator should be on. The blue wire, blue and grey wire, they come down to the board down here to that switch. Right, so the power connections into the transformer. Transformer output is this red and white wire which then feed back down to the board down here. So I can either probe it here or down there to check for voltage, AC voltage at that point. Um, let's do that. Let's just quickly do a check. This is actually likely to become a repair video, thinking about it. It looks like it's probably dead because there's no power being drawn out, so yeah. AC volts. Actually, I should hide the result of this, shouldn't I? You can't see the meter. How's that sound? Keep it a mystery. Will it or won't it have power? Oh, that's the way to do it. Will it or won't it have power? <laughs> oh, that's going to be funny. Right. I have my answer. You'd have to watch the video to find out. So this will be the repair budget. So watch out for that in the future. I'll be doing a video on this, obviously, repairing this thing. Whatever it may be. Catch you later. Have to subscribe if you want to subscribe. Click the bell icon. All that sort of stuff. And give me a thumbs up for like Mabo videos. And if you want to see this thing, make sure you do subscribe because this could be an interesting repair. Could be easy. Could be hard. Who knows?